let's do a quick uh, threat hunt. So for example, uh, a user calls a SOC team and says, you know, I was going through, I was watching a couple of websites and then my, my laptop or my, my machine is not behaving properly. The information that a SOC has to go over is the domain name and probably the source IP address of the user. For the sake of the, the demo, this is the domain name that our user went to. We see that yes, there is traffic uh, going through this to this domain. Uh, we could add uh, the host IP, and we see yeah, there is. This is our our source IP. I could add the path as well to see what kind of traffic uh, is coming. And you see a couple of DNS requests. So so that means he he opened the uh, the browser as well, and the DNS requests are there. Now if I go through the the log itself, I can you know do a table form or I can do a raw JSON, both are available. Uh, I see within within the DNS itself, uh, and if people have used things like NetFlow or DNS logs, they will clearly see that the amount of information present here with Zeek data is extremely rich. Uh, so we have the, the common things like the answers, the hosts, and the, the query itself. Uh, we also have, we also tag every session that we have with a UID, it's a common, unique identifier across protocols. Uh, if I go down, I look at the HTTP, I say, okay, he opened the, the, the browser as well. I look at traffic, I see, okay, there is, there is a GET request here. And uh, the GET request basically says something was, was downloaded. I see a file name, it is a, a GIF file. So nothing to worry about so far, Corelight also analyzes the file, it checks the mind type of the file, and the file is not a GIF file, it's an executable. So that clearly you know, makes it easier for an incident responder to see, aha, this doesn't look good. Why would somebody claim to be a, a GIF and is actually a DOS executable? So what we could do now, and we could see how many of these files are out there, I could easily take the UID, which is a unique identifier, uh, and Corelight also checks where did the file download from, what is a user agent. So we have all this all this rich information present. But I could just pick this up and just search based on the last and see what comes up. And I see okay, the, the, the connection log is there, HTTP, and I have some files as well that were downloaded. And I saw those files. This is the file that was downloaded. I could either do one of two things. I could take this file, send it to a sandbox, do an export and, and let it check over there. But Corelight has already analyzed the file and we know it's a portable executor. So it is, it is an execution file, it's an exec. So what I can do now is I can just take the SHA, ask virus total that, dear virus total, can you check if anybody has flagged this SHA and just to make it easier and quicker for the, the incident responder to take a decision. And lo and behold, there are 46 engines out there that say this is a bad shot. So now I can start the process of, you know, the response that maybe I need to quarantine this host. Maybe I need to check for things like lateral movement. Maybe there is data expel happening and all of that can be done with core light data and visualized on Elasticsearch. So this is how easy it becomes when you have rich data to work with, to, to view, it becomes so much easier to do an incident response and a threat hunt.